Read this question. Here, the derivative value of f of x is given. That is tan inverse of secant x plus tan x. Now observe that there is one interval of x is given. That is x is in between minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. And we have to use this while solving the question. Now, the value of the function at x is equal to 0 is given. That is equal to 0. And we have to calculate the value of function at x is equal to 1. Right? Now basically we are going to solve this question with three approaches. Now this first approach is going to be the elementary approach that comes from the idea or we can say comes from the knowledge of inverse trigonometric functions. If we have a nice knowledge of inverse trigonometric functions then with the help of that we can solve this very easily. So that's going to be our approach first. So we can write our f dash x is equal to tan inverse of we can write secant x plus tan x in terms of sin x and cos x as 1 plus sin x by cos x, right? Now we know one thing that we can write tan inverse of tan theta is equal to theta plus something only if there will be a tan term inside, right? But here we have sin and cos. Now what we can do? We can use half angle formula, right? And we know that we can write sin x is equal to 2 tan x by 2 by 1 plus tan square x by 2, right? Similarly, we can write cos x is equal to 1 minus tan square x by 2 by 1 plus tan square x by 2. Now, we can put it here and after rearrangement, our f dash x will be equal to tan inverse of 1 plus tan of x by 2 whole square by 1 minus tan square of x by 2. Observe that from numerator and denominator, we can cancel out 1 plus tan x by 2, right? Now, our f dash of x is equal to tan inverse of 1 plus tan x by 2 by 1 minus tan x by 2, right? Now, observe that this 1 in the numerator, we can write that as tan of pi by 4 because tan of pi by 4 is equal to 1, right? And we can write it here also. So basically, you can observe that this is like tan of pi by 4 plus tan of x by 2 by 1 minus tan of pi by 4 times tan of x by 2. And this we can write as tan of pi by 4 plus x by 2. Right? So now our f dash of x is equal to tan inverse of tan of pi by 4 plus x by 2. Now, we are not going to write this directly as pi by 4 plus x by 2. Why? Because from the knowledge of inverse trigonometric function, we know that tan inverse of tan theta is not always equal to theta, right? For that, we need to check the interval of the argument, interval of basically theta. So here, we can use this given information. Here it is given that x is in between minus pi by 2 to pi by 2, right? So from here, we are going to get that x by 2 is going to be in between minus pi by 4 to pi by 4. Now our argument is x by 2 plus pi by 4, right? So let's write pi by 4. So now our argument pi by 4 plus x by 2 is going to be in between 0 to pi by 2. And tan inverse of tan theta is equal to theta in the interval 0 to pi by 2. So from there, we are going to get that our f dash of x is equal to pi by 4 plus x by 2. Now, we need to calculate f of x. And we know that integration is reverse process of differentiation, right? So by that idea, we can say that our f of x is basically integral value of f dash of x. Right? Now, what is f dash of x? f dash of x is pi by 4 plus x by 2. Now, by linear nature of integrals, this will be equal to integration of pi by 4 now, pi by 4, we can take outside of the integration. That's going to be just integration of 1. That's going to be x plus integration of x by 2. This 1 by 2, we can take outside of the integration. So, that will be just integration of x. That's going to be x square by 2. Right? So, our value of f of x is equal to pi by 4 times x plus x square by 4 plus c. That is constant of integration. Now, to calculate this value of c, there is one given information. That says that f of 0 is equal to 0. So, let's use it here. So, from that, we are going to get value of c is equal to 0. So, now our f of x is equal to pi by 4 times x plus x square by 4. Now, we have to calculate the value of the function at x is equal to 1. So, let's put x is equal to 1 here. 
So by that f of 1 will be equal to pi by 4 plus 1 by 4. That's going to be pi plus 1 by 4. And that is there in option C. So option C is the right answer. Now let's move to the next approach to solve this integral. And that's going to be the integration approach. Obviously there also we have to take the help of inverse trigonometric functions. But the answer or I will say the function f of x which we are going to get there looks different than the answer which we got here. Here it's just a quadratic function, right? There it will look something different. And we know that integration always gives the same family of functions. So let's see our approach second. And then we will decide that whether we had made some mistake here in this approach one, but from here we got our answer or we are going to make a mistake in our approach two. So we are going to decide that after calculating f of x from approach two. So let's begin this our approach. Two. So our basic target is to calculate integral value of tan inverse of secant x plus tan x, right? Now, obviously the thought in our mind is to remove this tan inverse, right? So for that, I can substitute this secant x plus tan x is equal to tan theta, right? So that we are going to get tan inverse of tan theta is equal to theta. Obviously, that is interval dependent. I know that. But in case of indefinite integration, we take some flexibility. So that flexibility only we are taking. So let's see where it's going to direct us. Now, we have substituted this is equal to tan theta. Now let's take derivative of both sides with respect to theta, then we are going to get secant x tan x plus secant square x dx is equal to secant square theta d theta, right? Now here we can take secant x as common. Then this will be secant x plus tan x and we can write secant x plus tan x as tan theta, right? So we have secant x dx is equal to secant square theta by tan theta times d theta. Now we have to completely change our variable of integration, right? So basically we have to change this x in terms of theta. Now here we have one remaining term that is secant x. Now how we are going to substitute this? Well, for that we have this equation that is secant x plus tan x is equal to tan theta. Now let's take a square of both sides. Then we are going to get secant square x plus tan square x plus two times secant x tan x is equal to tan square of theta. Right now, what we are going to write this tan square of x in terms of secant x if you want, we can write that as secant square x minus one. Now this minus one, we can take to other side. So this side will become now one plus tan square theta. Now what is one plus tan square theta? That's going to be secant square theta, right? Now here we can add this as two times that we can take common secant square x plus secant x tan x. Now here we can take secant x as common. So that will be secant x plus tan x and that we can write as tan theta, right? So from here we can write secant x is equal to secant square theta by tan theta by 2, right? Now we can make this substitution in here, right? So from there we are going to get this as secant square theta by 2 times tan theta times dx is equal to secant square theta by tan theta times d theta. Now we can cancel this secant square theta tan theta, right? Now from here, we are going to get dx is equal to two times d theta, right? So now our integral value is basically equal to theta times two times d theta. Now two we can take outside of the integration. So this is basically integration of theta with respect to theta. And that's going to be theta square by two. Now this two will get canceled out, right? Now what is theta? We can see that Theta is basically tan inverse of secant x plus tan x, right? So our function f of x is basically equal to tan inverse of secant x plus tan x whole square plus some constant of integration, say c1, right? Now see, this is looking something different, right? Now let's use the initial value or I can say let's use the given information that f of zero is equal to zero. So if you're going to put f of zero is equal to zero, then this is going to be tan inverse of secant of zero is going to be one plus tan of zero is going to be zero. So that's going to be tan inverse of one and that is pi by four, right? 
so from here we are going to get c1 is equal to minus of pi by 4 whole square now this expression is actually looking different from the function which we got in our approach one right well to convert this also in that form we have to again take the help of inverse trigonometric functions now so of that in approach one we have written tan inverse of secant x plus tan x as pi by 4 plus x by 2 right so in this approach to our f of x is equal to basically pi by 4 plus x by 2 whole square minus pi by 4 square now if you're going to open this square this is going to be pi by 4 square plus x by 2 square plus 2 times pi by 4 times x by 2 now observe that this pi by 4 square will get cancelled out and from here we are going to get our f of x is equal to pi by 4 times x plus x square by 4 right and here also if you are going to put x is equal to 1 then again we are going to get this as pi plus 1 by 4 so this is also representing same family of functions although it was looking different but ultimately this got converted to the same form only now let's see the third approach the third approach we are going to calculate the integral value of this tan inverse of secant x plus tan x with the help of the method that is integration by parts why because if you remember that we have calculated the integral value of tan inverse of x with the help of integration by parts so this also we can calculate with the help of integration by parts right by keeping first function as tan inverse of secant x plus tan x and second function as 1 so by integration by parts this will be equal to tan inverse of secant x plus tan x times integration of 1 that's going to be x right now minus integration derivative of first function that's going to be 1 by 1 plus secant x plus tan x whole square because derivative of tan inverse of x is 1 by 1 plus x square now by chain rule we have to take derivative of secant x plus tan x also and that's going to be secant x tan x plus secant square x right now obviously multiplied with integral of 1 that's going to be x right now let's simplify this expression which is multiplied with this x so in numerator it is secant x tan x plus secant square x now in denominator it's 1 plus now let's open this square that's going to be secant square x plus tan square x plus 2 times secant x tan x right now we can write 1 plus tan square of x is equal to secant square of x right now this 2 we can take outside of the integration right now observe that in numerator also we have secant x tan x plus secant square x and denominator is also secant x tan x plus secant square of x that will get cancelled out so now this will be just 1 by 2 times integration of x and what's going to be integration of x it's going to be x square by 2 right so by this our function f of x is equal to x times tan inverse of secant x plus tan x minus x square by 4 plus obviously constant of integration say let's name that as c2 now this is also looking different different from the function which we got in approach 2 initially after calculating the integral value and different from the function which we got in approach 1 now here also let's apply this that f of 0 is equal to 0 so from there we are going to get c2 is equal to 0 now here also we have to take again the help of inverse trigonometric functions and from there we can write this tan inverse of secant x plus tan x as pi by 4 plus x by 2 right now by that our this function f of x is basically equal to this is going to be x times pi by 4 plus x square by 2 now this is minus x square by 4 so from here also we got f of x is equal to pi by 4 times x plus x square by 4 now if you are going to put x equal to 1 here then uh, we are going to get f of 1 is equal to pi plus 1 by 4 now here also we got the same answer so we can observe that initially we got these three functions but all three of them actually represent same family of functions and with the given initial condition that is f of 0 is equal to 0 we can say that they all represent actually 
same function in that particular interval of x that is minus pi by 2 to pi by 2. So hopefully you have understood this question and all of these different approaches.